Mama, is God real? Is marriage for life? Do we have to be baptized? Is drinking really wrong? Well, that's your interpretation. Where do I come from? Do we really have to have authority for what we do? Where is God when I need him? Rise up, O men of God. His kingdom tarries long. Bring him the day of brotherhood and in the night of wrong. Hello, friends, and welcome again to The Shield of Faith. My name is Wes Garland, and I am the preacher of the Sequatchie Valley Church of Christ in Pikeville, Tennessee, and alongside Wes, as always, we have Eric Pickup. Hey, Wes. He is the preacher of the Northwest Church of Christ in Clay County, Tennessee. We also have with us Barry Kennedy. Glad to be here. And he is the preacher of the Crossville Church of Christ in Crossville, Tennessee. And friends, we hope and pray that for the next 30 minutes, you'll take out your Bible, paper, and pen and study with us because we are continuing this series of lessons on seeing Jesus as he truly is. And uh, we've already talked about the radical Jesus. We've talked about the cross of Jesus. In our last program we talked about the prayers of Jesus and today we're going to be talking about the compassion of Jesus. Now guys, whenever you really think about the definition of compassion, it's simply this, a care or a concern for someone or something. Mm -hmm. But as what we're about to see, Jesus defines it as caring and concern to the point of acting upon it. Right. Yes. And. Uh, and I mean, there's so many things that, that you read about in the Gospel of Counts as, as he had compassion on people. Mm -hmm. Multiple, multiple times. We're going to take a look at those today. But you, you think, for instance, the care and concern sort of refers back to the reason that he was sent here to begin with for this first one. Remember there in Luke 19 and verse 10, he gave the purpose, he said, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save those who mm -hmm. are lost. Yes. Right. Now, understanding that, he understands the purpose behind his coming, mm -hmm. the reason why he's here, the mission that he has been given. And to understand that, you find here in Matthew chapter 9, beginning here in verse number 35, you start seeing here him trying to implement his compassion to send forth his apostles. Now, he has not yet uh, gathered all of them, and that's going to happen in chapter 10. Mm -hmm. But you see here in verse number 35 of Matthew chapter 9, he says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, mm -hmm. talking about the people that were there in the cities, he said he was moved with compassion for them. Now, notice what his his whole concern and his love and passion was he says he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd and then he said to his disciples the harvest truly is plentiful but the laborers are few therefore pray the Lord of, of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest I mean what he did he looked past the physical things in life he, he went about not looking at the physical things, but looking at the spiritual things of man. Mm -hmm. And when he looked about that, he saw that there were so many people that were in these cities. He had compassion to evangelize. I think we should point out here, though, one thing. He saw the multitude. Mm -hmm. Yes. He was watching. He, he noticed people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We live in a, in a very busy society today mm -hmm. and we catch ourselves going and coming and mm -hmm. even in their homes we're meeting ourselves going and coming he, he mm -hmm. took time to watch people it mm -hmm. reminds me of one uh, instructor in a school of preaching talked about he would take his whole class to the local mall and mm -hmm. have them sit in the mall and just said watch people that's your audience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where did he get that i believe he guess guess this from what we're seeing right here jesus mm -hmm. saw people he, mm -hmm. he watched people he noticed people mm -hmm. and so I think that's that, something that's, important to point out yeah. as we're considering this, is his compassion. I was thinking this as we're talking, you were talking earlier in the introduction about this compassion. It reminded me of the, of the passage in James 2, 14, faith without works is dead. Yes. Mm -hmm. Compassion mm -hmm. without action is the same way. That's exactly, right. exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. It's useless. You, you can have compassion. And so many times I've, I've even seen members come to me and say, you know what, I'm concerned for this individual. You need to go talk to him. And you're going, if you're concerned about him, shouldn't you be the one to go and talk to them? 
Mm -hmm. That's the one that's all the need. That's the one yeah. that's all the need. That's the one that's exactly. All. Yeah. And see that, I mean, are we not our brother's keeper? Mm. We are. And that's what every individual, I mean, that's not just the preacher's job. Yeah. It's everybody's job. But you think about this. He had compassion upon the people. He looked at them. And see, you're, you're never going to see the, the prospect of the mission unless you see the people to begin with. Right. And, you know, whenever you really think about it, that's what urged him to evangelize. Mm -hmm. That's what, that was the main center focus of why he did what he did, mm -hmm. is that he had compassion upon those individuals. Mm -hmm. And we need to learn very, very much about that. That's right. Because unless we, if we, if we at any point in time ever lose sight of, of the reason why we're here, you know, his whole purpose in Luke 19.10 was to seek and to save, Whenever he ascended back up to heaven, right before he did, he gave that command, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He gave and delegated his mission to us. Jesus already did his part. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for us to fulfill our part. I asked a fellow on one occasion. He, he was he incarcerated and we were sitting and we were talking. And I asked him what his purpose in life was. What he felt like his purpose for being here was. He said, I wish I knew. Mm -hmm. So I opened to Ecclesiastes chapter well, you know, look mm -hmm. at verse 13. There it is. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments. This is the whole of man. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. our purpose is. And just as you said earlier here, we're talking about evangelism, his compassion toward others. He commanded us to go. That's right. He commanded the disciples. Mm -hmm. He commanded us as well through mm -hmm. those disciples. It's a continual process. And if we're going to, you know, fulfill our purpose in life, we're going to have to be compassionate toward the needs of others. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, exactly. He, he, was, he had compassion on them because... Were because they were weary and scattered as sheep having no shepherd. Mm -hmm. He saw a need that needed to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sheep need a shepherd. You know, without a shepherd, they're just going to be, they are not going to be able to, uh, you know, they're just going to be lost. They ain't mm -hmm. gonna, you're, you're not going to be able to, uh, uh, to have, do very well, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't have a shepherd. Uh, and, and so he saw that this was a great need. You know, we need to see the great need of, mm -hmm. of people that are lost mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and that uh, we should have compassion upon them and we should have a drive and a desire to, help, to try to lead them to Christ. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's something that, uh, it's probably, a, it's, it's something that's difficult for us mm -hmm. um, to have an evangelistic attitude. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a it's an area that we fall short in, mm -hmm. uh, in my estimation. You know, um, we all fall short, and and are not as uh, you know we we the things that we can improve in. And mm -hmm. I know that uh, you know I would say uh, a lot of brethren could improve in the area of evangelism. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know we look at uh, you know how that the church um, has uh, you know is dying in, in different places. You know, why is that? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we sow the seed of the kingdom, then we're going to receive an increase. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just need to be sowing the seed. And, uh, you know, there's many excuses that we could use. And, you know, I can come up with a, a, a thousand different excuses, but at the end of the day, that's what they are. They're excuses. Mm -hmm. they, you know, right. we, we need to appreciate the difference between an excuse and a reason. Mm -hmm. um, you know, an excuse is something that we use to get out of doing something, but a reason mm -hmm. is something that is, the, is, out of your hands. is really out of your hands that you cannot possibly fulfill this mm -hmm. because, uh, because of the reason. But, you know, the uh, Jesus, uh, you know, he... He commanded that we be evangelism. Go in all mm -hmm. the world and preach the gospel. Uh, and, and so we, we have to take that as, as something that's important to our lives. If we don't, then, uh, you know, that's sin on our behalf. You know, I'll, I just want to bring about this point. During the first century when Christ was on this earth doing his mission, there were false teachers all around. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were taking people left and right. Okay? In our same situation today there mm -hmm. are false teachers all around us yeah absolutely and they have in a lot of cases i've seen they've got more compassion than what our, the church actually has in a lot of ways times. and what's so sad about this is that we need to realize that if we are not doing our mission mm -hmm. that if we're not having the compassion to go out and to seek and save those who are lost 
those false teachers will grab them. Yeah, uh, you know, and they'll just lead them in their own error. The first step of being evangelistic is to have compassion and exactly. to see the need. Seeing the need. To see exactly. the need. The individuals exactly. need the gospel. What exactly was he seeing when he saw these people without a shepherd? He saw them without a standard. Yeah, yes. exactly. He saw them without exactly. protection. Mm -hmm. exactly. And of course, then he uses the term about the harvest is plenteous. The laborers are few, and that that we see the. Uh, it's kind of a depressing statement that Jesus is making. I, mm -hmm. I need more workers, mm -hmm. and it brings me over to Luke chapter ten. He mm -hmm. sent forth the 70. Mm -hmm. He sent forth the 70, telling them to go out and be laborers or few. Same idea there. Mm -hmm. He says, pray ye therefore, this is verse 2, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. But now if we're going to pray that prayer, we need to be ready to be one of those laborers. Yes, exactly. Be Absolutely. an answer to that prayer. Put legs on the prayer, so to say. But you go down to verse 9. As he's told about whatever city, verse 8, whatever city you enter, uh, they receive you, eat such things that are set before you, and heal the sick, and therein say unto them, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it starts with a, an understanding of who we are and what we represent as well. Mm -hmm. Now, seeing the need and having compassion on them, but it starts with realizing that what we're bringing to them. Mm -hmm. You've heard illustrations, and I'm sure preachers, we've used those illustrations before. Mm -hmm. If you found the cure to cancer, mm -hmm. what do you do with it? Do you just use it on yourself? Do you use it for your family alone? Or No, you, you want that to be made known. Mm -hmm. You want that spread abroad. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I mean that's that's the same thing. The reason why we we uh, we expose false doctrines, why we expose false teachers, why we expose all these other things, because I even used an illustration yesterday in my lesson that if if we had a restaurant in town that was poisoning and killing people, mm -hmm. would you expect for me just to go about and just say, okay, I want to give you some details? of this restaurant. I'm going to give you some characteristics of this, but I'm not going to mention any names now. Yeah. Or would you expect me mm -hmm. and want for me to tell you which restaurant it was? We sell ourselves a false line of uh, that, that that's not compassionate to call out. And yeah. That's being judgmental exactly. and radical. Yeah. Yeah. Radical, yeah. But no, it's going back to a standard. It is. So we can see that it in is. physical things, and I think part of the problem is because we're focused more so on the physical than we are the spiritual. Mm -hmm. We don't understand and appreciate mm -hmm. the afterlife we talked about previously. Exactly. We don't exactly. appreciate that enough to see that there is a great need here. Exactly. Because they're good people. Yeah. And, and see the them. compassion yeah, right. behind it, the reason why we are mentioning those individuals or mentioning those churches or whatever is because we have compassion for you to, to warn you. That's right. And we, did Jesus not do the same thing? Right. Absolutely. He says, beware of the Pharisees and beware of their leaven. Beware of yeah. all these other things. Why did he call them out? Because he had compassion and concern for his own disciples. Yeah. I mean, he you, can read, you, you can read the, the, the Bible from, from cover to cover, and, no. and, and, and you'll not find a prophet, an apostle, uh, that was proclaiming the, the will of God that did not be specific and, and was not mm -hmm. willing to call that which was false, mm -hmm. false. Uh, and, uh, and any person worth their salt today would be mm -hmm. willing to do that as well, you know, because mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's like you said, you would want to know the restaurant that's, that's poisoning people. If I, was, if I was driving down the street and I saw somebody's house was on fire, you know, I'm not going to call the, the fire department and say, well, there's a house on fire. I can't tell you exactly which one that it is. I, I can give you a <laughs> they may want it to That's burn. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I better not say. So, uh, you know, we, we see that, like you said, in the physical sense. Specifics right. in EMS and things like that is very important. Yeah. Did Jesus have compassion on Saul of Tarsus? Yes. Yes. But yeah. what did he tell him when he saw him on the road to Damascus? It's hard for you to get against That's You're right. hurting yourself here is You're what he said. That's right. Did Jesus have compassion on Peter when he said, get thee behind me, Satan? Yes, yes he did. Why did he say, get thee behind me, Satan? Because what Peter was advocating was Satan's way. That's exactly. right. False. Yes. Exactly. Yes. But, uh, you know, we're all about seeing the need yes. and fulfilling that need. You know, Jesus, in multiple different occasions, not only did he see the need to evangelize, but he also had, in another occasion, the feeding of the 5,000. Mm -hmm. Notice how it all began in Matthew 15, verse 32. He says, Now Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. He had compassion on them. He saw the need that they were hungry. Mm -hmm. And he did not want to send them away 
hungry because they fed on the way and everything. And let's just say nature. exactly what he saw. He saw a physical need. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He didn't just see the, the spiritual, spiritual side. He saw the physical, the physical need. Physical. That's right. And even in different occasions, as we've already read about, uh, he even had that compassion upon people to even heal them. That's what motivated him to do this. I mean, it was opportunities given before him to, to show who he was, to say, listen, you know, in a lot of cases, I've even mentioned this to uh, many members, a lot of times if we can help somebody physically, it might get their attention to be helped spiritually. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what the Lord did. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only in the feeding, but he also, in Matthew 14, verse 14, it says, And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. Yeah. To show the power that he had, to show who he was, was going to not only help them physically, but also let them see who he was to lead them to him. Mm -hmm. and, and looking at this, this goes against the modern mindset of, of the miracles today yeah. that mm -hmm. people want to claim and profess yeah. today. The purpose of miracles you see in, Ma in Mark 16, as you continue reading 15, 16 mm -hmm. uh, through 18 there, you see in that context, you said the, the w miracles were to confirm the word. Exactly. Yes. And that's not what's taking place in what most people profess to be right. doing today, of exactly. confirming the word. Exactly. Jesus was moved with compassion. He saw these needs, physical needs, and, and it's similar to what was said about him in Philippians 2, where he took upon himself this, the form of a man. Mm -hmm. form and fashion of a man. He took upon himself this. He was made in the likeness of men. Mm -hmm. uh, he took upon him flesh so he could be tempted in all points like as we are, the Hebrew writer would say. Mm -hmm. Now for the first time, he learned obedience. He experienced what it was like to be obedient mm -hmm. because he was God, mm -hmm. is God, always has been, always will be, um, robed in flesh now. Mm -hmm. Now he has a different appreciation, if you will, mm -hmm. to a physical infirmity. Mm -hmm. And he's moved with compassion toward that and does what he can, which he could do all things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but does what he can to alleviate that. And we should be doing the same as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I would submit, even in America today, and in, in, in denominations in the church, that we are, we are we're, we're okay in this area. We're pretty mm -hmm. good at this area. Oh, yeah. We see a physical need there. We try to meet that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do we go from that, though, to seeing those spiritual needs? Yeah. Exactly. Using it the same way there. Exactly. That's the difficulty that we face. Exactly, exactly. And sometimes we let... Uh, sometimes we let pity, uh, you know, and, and uh, or the, the fact that we feel sorry for somebody's condition move us to do something for somebody that's not really the best for them in their situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because sometimes compassion would require us to look towards the best of what needs to be done for this individual. And so uh, perhaps the best thing that we could do for, for an individual is sometimes to tell them no. Yeah. Um, that may be the best thing that we could tell somebody. Um, or uh, the best thing that we could do is to uh, maybe help somebody help themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because sometimes individuals are just seeking a handout mm -hmm. and they really have the Without capability. Without any requirements or nothing. That, that's about. right. Yeah. I know it didn't originate with my father, but I remember him teaching even Bible classes when I was growing up and teaching us at home. This statement he would use quite often, they don't care how much you know until, until they know, know how much you care. That's right. That's and it. Jesus showed that first and foremost, mm -hmm. his compassion. Exactly. And I think that's the reason this is mentioned so many yeah. times in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, this, just these last two points and compassion to feed and compassion to heal, seeing the need, it brings up a good verse for us. Galatians 6 and verse 10. Where it says there that as we have opportunity, mm -hmm. let us, let us, talking about Paul, the church, all of us, do good mm -hmm. unto all men. To do something. Now, some that, 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 no, it doesn't say in some To men. some men. It, it, it says, says to it all really men. says to all. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to be degree. specific about yeah. it. It says, let us do good do to all. To mm -hmm. all. And then he goes on to specify, especially those right. of the household That's of right. faith. Now, why? Because we are our brothers so and sisters, right. and we are to help. We've got a special bond. If we see each other in need, we are to fulfill that need. Mm -hmm. Now, but he's also commanded us to do good unto all men. Mm -hmm. Now, in all reality, did Christ himself help everyone? Yes, yes he did. Yes, in yes all he reality, did. Yes. In all reality, he did. He mm -hmm. tasted death for every man. Exactly, mm -hmm. he tasted death for every man. But notice this, even some of those people that he healed did not automatically follow him. Right. Mm -mm. But he went through, he saw a need, and he saw the opportunity, and therefore he expounded upon himself his own power 
to heal them, mm -hmm. to try to get their attention. So he's a perfect example for us today that if, uh, just because a person's not a member of the church, they're a lost individual that we can't help them. Right. That's a command given to us to fulfill. But you know what? Another good example of his compassion that we read in the scriptures is found in Matthew 18. Remember there with the parable of the, um, the unforgiving servant? In this, you know, the king is representing Christ. And the man comes to him and says, okay, um, the king comes to him and says, okay, give me all that you owe to me. And he says, Father, or the king, just, just give me just a little bit of time and I promise you I will pay thee all. Well, whenever he saw that, he saw his heart. Notice what he says here in verse number 27. He says, and the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. Mm -hmm. He says, listen, everything that you owe me, forget about it. And of course we know the mount was something that he could not pay. Exactly. I mean, it was going to take years, mm -hmm. like a thousand years or whatever, to, to repay everything that he was, was needing to pay. Mm -hmm. But this is one of those things that you have to understand. The debt that we have to God, we've sinned. Right. We ourselves sent Christ to the cross because of our sins. But this is the whole point. He has compassion, and he forgave the servant. Mm -hmm. Complete forgiveness. Complete mm -hmm. forgiveness. Not partial. Right. Not partial. Right. But he said, everything that, that you owe to me has been released. Mm -hmm. Kind of yeah. reminds you of the commercials you hear on the radio and things, if you owe so much in debt to the IRS, <laughs> call this company, and they will reduce the amount. Exactly. Something's better than nothing. No, he completely <laughs> yeah. forgave exactly. the debt. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And well, that's part of the new covenant. Mm -hmm. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities. Will I remember no more? No it's more. gone. Yes. Yeah. He's not going to hold us accountable right. to it anymore. But, but you know what? Another example of this is found in Luke 15. You remember there in verse number 20, this is the, uh, the parable of the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. Now, remember what he did. The, the son came to the father and he says, give me all that you have to give me. Mm -hmm. He wanted his inheritance and he went ahead and gave him all of it. And he went and did it on rights living is what it says. Basically, just wasteful, just wasteful worldly things. Mm -hmm. But he found himself in the pig's pen, mm -hmm. eating what the pigs ate. Yes. Which was totally anti Jewish in all reality. It was totally against their traditions, everything to eat with swine or anything. Well, he finally came to himself. Mm -hmm. And he went back. And notice what happens here in verse number 20. Talking about the father, he says, And he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him. Now that means that the Lord is still searching, even though you walked away from the path. Mm -hmm. He is waiting for your return. He says, even though he was way, uh, a great way off, he says his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Right. If you're willing to come back, I'm willing to forgive you. And that's and, and the think whole about point what, about it. Think about what this prodigal was saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we sometimes, I think, miss this in the text. He said, give me that portion that falls to me. Mm -hmm. In essence, we would say, give me your, my inheritance. Yeah. When does a child receive his inheritance? After the death of the person. So in, is it a stretch to say that he's saying to his father, I, I really don't want you. Mm -hmm. I want your possessions. Mm -hmm. I want... Mm -hmm. Do we sometimes do the same thing with God today? Yes. Give me heaven, but I don't want church. Right. Give me yeah. heaven, but I don't want the word. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And you but he still you restores him, him, though. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He doesn't exactly. even let him finish his confession that he had rehearsed in the yeah. hog pen. Yeah, right. He's made me one of the hired servants. We're not even going there. No. Bring the best robe. Bring the ring. Bring yeah. the shoes. This my son was dead. Now he's alive again. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Not only was he dead and now he's alive again, I submit to you what he was saying that when he came to himself that in rebellion, it's insanity. That's mm -hmm. right. He, yeah. he came to himself. Right. He was out of his yeah. mind to be where he was at. Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean he's not accountable. Mm -hmm. Of yeah. course, we wouldn't go that far. But, yeah. I mean, it, it's, a, it's an insane position to take that you're going to rebel from God. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's, Absolutely. in essence, what I believe would be the core of that. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it, it's just amazing whenever you really think about the Lord's compassion to forgive. Because in all reality, going back to what we've already mentioned, Romans 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. You know, going back to even what you said two episodes ago about the cross of Christ, he did that for me. Mm -hmm. For me. 
at any point in time we ever lose sight of that is the time that we lose sight of, of everything with God. God and commended his love toward exactly. us while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Exactly. That, that, that breeds compassion there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've, we've talked in times past about grace and mercy. Grace is God giving man what he does not deserve, and mercy is God not giving man what he does deserve. Mm -hmm. And in all reality, every time that we sin against God, we spit in the face of Jesus. And we basically, as what the Hebrew writer says, we trample underfoot the blood of Christ, mm -hmm. basically crucifying him afresh. Mm -hmm. Now, if we do that every time we sin, we don't deserve forgiveness. We don't. But his compassion leads him to forgive. But he says, you must do what I asked you to do to mm -hmm. meet those requirements for forgiveness. Well, he's not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slack. Exactly. Of course, now we would know that that promise in the context is mm -hmm. the promise that he's coming back exactly. so earlier in, in this chapter. Exactly. But he's long-suffering. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That also speaks of compassion. That's right. Because you, you, it takes compassion to suffer along with someone. Exactly. And just think of what I, as an individual, I have to look within and think of what I have caused, on, or what I've put God through, if, if you will, and causing him pains and my weaknesses and my failures. But he's mm -hmm. long-suffering to us. And he's not willing that any should perish. But what? It doesn't mean he's going to save you in spite of your sin. No, you got to. Come. We have to we come, have to, to, come to him. That's right. That's it. Which basically alludes to the fact that uh, forgiveness is something that's conditional. Mm -hmm. it it's uh, conditioned yeah. based upon whether or not uh, I'm. I first of all got a desire to have it, and then I've got to obey God's precepts in order to receive forgiveness. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Jesus died for the sins of all men, but yet mm -hmm. that does not mean that all men are saved and that That's all right. men have obtained that forgiveness because right. to access that forgiveness and the grace of God, uh, we have to obey his will and his word and what he has told us to do to uh, receive that, that forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, there's another thing that we need to talk about. You know, through our, our lives, we have a lot of turmoil and we've got a lot of stress upon us and, and we think that, there's, that we can't find any comfort anywhere. Mm. You know, and the Lord has compassion mm -hmm. that he wants to comfort us. And in an occasion there in Luke chapter 7 in verse number 13, what basically happens is that a son of a widow, he dies. Okay? And notice what it says here in verse number 13. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. You know, you think when you're alone, or you think you're alone. Mm -hmm. right. We're never alone. Right. Right. But he wants to comfort us in everything. But you also think about how he had compassion. This is the way we're going to end this lesson. Compassion to save. Mm -hmm. You know, his whole purpose here was to seek and to save those who were lost. Luke 19, verse 10. Yes. And friends, this is one of those things we've got to understand. The Lord wants to comfort you. He wants to save you. But he won't unless you meet his requirements. You know, the Lord has opened up the door. He has made the path. He's given the statement. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Will you heed to that? If we can be of any assistance to you, call us, email us. Go to our website, shieldoffaithtv.com. But until next time, may God bless. Just think about it. Yeah.